Hey guys, Sun down here. This is gonna be my chapter review to One Punch Man One One Nine. I'm not actually sure what it's called. The the black box on the the cover page says a glimpse behind the scenes, but I'm not sure if that's referring to something else or the chapter. So I'm gonna say this is called a glimpse behind the scenes. Uh, a really kind of not a controversial chapter, but a chapter that will have no doubt resulted in loads of theories. Even in the podcast, people were going off um, theorizing a little bit more. Not that that's a bad thing, but that's not really where my strengths lie, and it's not something I'm I'm it's not something I'm too interested in. To be fair, I'm not I'm not much of a theories type of guy, uh, and it's why I don't get spoiled a lot, and it's why I don't read spoilers because I don't I don't need theories or anything like that to be confirmed or my previous suspicions to be confirmed. I just I just go with the flow, um, and kind of I, I, I can I can guess what's going to happen in the next couple of chapters, but I don't not much of a theory person. But this chapter was good. And <laughs> there will be like a couple of ideas around Drive Night and like how suspicious he is, but we'll get to that anyway. Uh, the chapter starts with uh, Second Guy talking to Drive Night, and he's there like, "Oh my God, yeah, you smashed the shit out of that uh, dr- that m- that monster, the Nyan, that is the Dragon Class monster. I can't believe you did it. Uh, it was no match against you." And Drive Night tells us he is straight. He's like, "No, that's not the case." Like. This this monster was as strong as as it was supposed to be. It was a dragon class monster for real. Uh, infl- inflicting a fatal wound using a frontal attack would have been extremely difficult for Drive Knight to do. And I was like, really? Like you jumped in, you kicked the shit out of him. Like you gotta explain yourself here, boy. Why was it not a feasible idea? Prove to me that it wasn't a feasible idea. So he goes over first. He's like the negative qualities of uh, Nian in this sense. Uh, he was too overconfident and he was too reckless. Um, when he was fighting Drive Knight, he hadn't anticipated that Drive Knight might have actually known a little bit about him. And then we're just like, "What do you mean?" Because he actually says, "I, I collected my enemy's battle data here uh, beforehand, and I was able to gain an upper hand due to that." Second guy looks at him. He's like, "Battle data? What are you talking about?" And we see here, it's a. It was one of the cover pages. Zonin mentioned this, and I think pretty much everyone in the podcast kind of clocked on as well. Uh, but Zonin, Zonin was the one that mentioned it. Um, the building that we see Drive Knight here in this panel looking over the battle while Nian's kicking the shit out of all the A, B class heroes this, this is the same building that was a cover page a while ago and you see that crow on it I think that crow flies onto the building in that um, in that cover page so we see Drive Knight kind of looking down over the over the city and he's looking down at Nian in particular and he's analyzing his moves he's analyzing his attacks he's analyzing what he's doing to these A and B class heroes so this is exactly how uh, Drive Knight fights, he looks, he analyzes, he collects data, he tries to work out an enemy's weakness. Okay, so they may be incredibly strong, but how are they, when they, how are they in terms of strength? So he's there analyzing, uh, sizing up what his enemies can do, and then he finds out how to best combat their skill set. Um, so Second Guard asks him straight up, he's like, dude, like these guys were getting their asses kicked, you could have jumped in and helped a little bit earlier. Uh, Drive Knight here, like, I'm not sure whether you guys would agree, but I can, I can kind of see where he's I can see where he's coming from. Um, he's like, you know what? If 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 I jumped in and done what I whatever I could have at that point in time, the situation would only have gotten worse because then the drag uh, an S class hero would probably be getting his ass kicked due to insufficient analysis of the um of the monster. And he he, he says twice this chapter that's my way of fighting, almost as if he's Naruto. But he says that that way of that that style of fighting where he has to analyze pre analyze his his uh, his opponent. That's what that that way of fighting is what secured the victory for him. That's what made it look easy for him, and he exploited that, uh, even though the, the the rest of the heroes were falling. So I kind of agree with him in the, in a sense here. You know what would be, what would have been the point if Drive Knight had jumped in totally unprepared and then been uh, getting his ass kicked too? If if that's what would have happened, it would have been better for him to do what he did, which is even though the the rest of the heroes are pretty much dying. He sits there and analyzes, comes best prepared, and is able to finish off Nian the way he did. If he didn't, Nian would still be walking around kicking the shit out of everyone. So, even though it sounds very shady and it looks very shady, I kind of agree with Drive Knight's perspective here, and I think so did Second Guard. But then Second Guard goes on to the point of we haven't been able to contact you for the last two days. You know, communications have been shut down ever since you went and infiltrated the Monster Association. Where the hell have you been? Uh, and he, in his mind, he's just thinking to himself, you know. Uh, he, he's he's very very aware of this, the rumors surrounding the inexplicable uh, inexplicable things and rumors surrounding Drive Knight's actions, and he's also aware of Child Emperor being worried about the existence of a mole. So Second Guard here has kind of put one and one together, and he's like, mm, if Child Emperor is worried about a mole, Drive Knight conveniently went missing for two days. 
you know, it kind of adds up a little bit. So I'm this chapter, I think, f- for me, felt like it was pushing the idea of everybody should think that Drive Night is suspicious, is the mole, is the traitor. And usually when there's chapters like this, I'm I'm inclined to think that the character that's being pushed as the traitor or the mole is most likely not the mole. But everything Drive Night does this chapter is so suspicious. So we see Drive Night here. I'll come back to that. We see Drive Night here explain what he was during, doing during the um, his two days on vacation, essentially. And he was in the Monster Association mapping out the entire layer. You see he's got all the different floors and stuff like that. He had the location of Waganma. Uh, not just that, he has a breakdown of all the executives, what their names are, characteristics, battle styles. He's done some big time work. He's put in all the legwork for the uh, the Hero Association. And he says here again, this is my way of fighting. You know, going in, collecting information, being as prepared as possible to fight the threat that we need to fight. Uh, the only reason why he didn't share this information with the heroes is because he suspected that there was um, a traitor in their midst and he didn't want the traitor getting their hands on it. Uh, and he says that the way he obtained information on the executives was uh, he interrogated a few monsters to obtain that information. Now, I'm 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 not convinced that, you know, lower class monsters will know the what the likes of Black Sperm can do, Homeless Emperor. He, they wouldn't know what their abilities are, right? Especially someone like Black Sperm or someone like people who just don't willy nilly show off their abilities. Um, so I'm not sure if I buy into that, which throws a little bit more suspicion spice over Drive Knight's head. Uh, so I'm, once again, I'm not sure if I believe that so much. But second guy is like, he's interested. He's like, oh, a traitor? You know something about this? So Drive Knight here is like, before we get to that question, what's the current situation regarding the heroes? So Drive Knight wants a full download of what, what, where are the heroes right now? What's the state of the um, hero association? Give me a good idea of the environment, the current landscape. What are we dealing with? Second guard does this and Drive Knight, this is where Drive Knight goes from like like 20% suspicious to like a full 100% suspicious. So he's like, all right, so in addition to Metal Knight, Tank Top Master, there are capable heroes uh, in the Hero Association in A-Class and below, as well as Tank Top Master, uh, Tank Top Master and Metal Knight, um, who, have been made, who have been incapacitated as a result of battling monsters or and, and or the Hero Hunter, which is Gato. So he's like, all right, that's cool, but... If that's the case, if a new emergency were to pop up, who would be defending the monster, the Hero Association? Who is is it wide open right now? And the way that is his one kind of um, his one eye, essentially the one sclera and one uh, well, sclera, the one iris and pupil, they kind of contract into that very focused mode uh, that Drive Knight has. It's just one small eye uh, that that instantly makes him look like he's interested in something. That that's how I would view something. Uh, someone who's interested, you know, their eyes narrow. I'm not sure if that's a thing. Do, they, do your eyes dilate or do they contract uh, when, you, when you're when you interested in something? I'm not sure how it goes. Do they even dilate? But um, he seems to be very interested by the fact that the Hero Association could be wide open. Second guy has starting to sweat here. He's like, eh, what makes you say that it's wide open? So Drive Knight goes in to explain. He's like, okay, so, you know, we don't have Watchdog Man. He's, he's absent from the headquarters. Uh, if the monsters, uh, even if the monsters took an opportunity to attack, this is second guy speaking. He's like the, the hero association is equipped with state of the art weapons facilities. Um, it's 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 meant to be incredibly defensive, a solid structure, right? That's how Metal Knight designed it. Um, and he he brings up both way here. He brings up Metal Knight. He's like, plus he said he has absolute confidence in its defensive capabilities against monsters. And this is where Drive Knight's like, I right, you know what? He did build it. But you put your blind trust in this guy. That that alone shows how far the Hero Association has fallen. So he in, he straight up says here, he's like, Metal Knight, Dr. Beaufoy, indeed is the is the traitor I'm referring to. He then proceeds to talk about this elaborate plan that uh, Beaufoy has. But he, yeah, the second guy, I love the way second guy actually thinks here. Second guy uses his brain and says, actually, like even though you have this whole elaborate ruse and things like that going on, you've not presented me with any tangible proof that says that Metal Knight is actually, or Buffoy is actually uh, the traitor. You, all you've given me is speculation, suspicion, which is the same thing that we have for Drive Knight, except that he, his act, his his words and the way he acts this chapter is just super weird. So Drive Knight goes in to talk about his conspiracy theory surrounding Metal Knight. He's like, all right, so Metal Knight, the Metal Knight drone, so the one we see with the bowling ball face, the three holes in it. Uh, he's like, um, this, this drone he was controlling 
was destroyed and taken apart by the monsters in the Monster Association uh, and under Orochi. This happened on the eve of the final battle, which is convenient because that would give them a potential data leak. Uh, the timing and place couldn't really have been worse. And I, I'm like, okay, that that's kind of that makes sense. That is a really bad uh, time to lose something which which contains a lot of that information or has access to a lot of that information. Um, especially when you find out here that he says that Bofoy can link a large number of his robots, uh, robot weaponry into one autonomous unit. So essentially they share some sort of shared network where they can, um, where they can relay information to and from one another. So even if one of them is like a mile or 10 miles away, they, they can still have the same, uh, information downloaded onto them as the other one from 10 miles away. So they, they have that kind of network of information where they all carry the same kind of information it's all decentralized and they they have the uh, same information uh, available to them so they're all updated to whatever's going on at any one time um so he can he can these these robots can be used as kind of like one autonomous unit because they're, sh they're deriving from one shared network and they're capable of communicating battle data to each other in real time but and that's that's a credit to their battle efficiency um but he says Metal Knight, the one that we we are, we know so much and we love so much, that's Bofoy's favorite machine. It, he wouldn't just give it up. So what he has done is he's he's given it as a gift to the Monster Association, and then the Monster Association here he's like, if they somehow manage to utilize uh, the machine's data, analyze the machine's data, uh, in, hack into the system, essentially the the Monster Association would have full control over his robotic weapons and stuff like that. And then he just pre presents Second Guard with a disaster situation. He's like, in that case, the Hero Association's defense system will, will all of that information will be um, privy to um, the Monster Association. So they will know exactly how to combat it. They will know how to intercept the weapons. They know how to essentially reduce them uh, to uselessness and, and make them unresponsive and all that good stuff. Uh, but he, he says that <laughs> over here is like both for his missile launch codes and his unmanned bombers and all that stuff. All the control passwords for that would be in the possession of the Monster Association. So they'd have access to all that shit. So the Monster Association, uh, the Hero Association would essentially be a sitting duck because they'd have the blueprints to it and they'd be able to kick the shit out of it. Um, second guard is like shocked. He's like, yo shit, he anticipated all that, but he still lost to Orochi on purpose. Uh, and yeah, I love uh, I love Drive Knight's kind of reason here. He's like, oh yeah, the goal was to supply the monsters with weapons. He's been waiting for his opportunity to take over the world uh, because he's a bad guy. And I was like, mm, that that's a that's a very deep reason. It's like he's a bad guy because he's a bad guy. And it's like, thanks, man. That's that's a that's a good reason right there. But this all sounds to me like this whole kind of this disaster situation that drive night has presented it all seems very fishy in the sense of drive night's giving him like this end of world scenario the, the the hero association would be collapsing you know frodo wouldn't be able to throw the ring into the fire and all that shit and i'm just like if bofoy really wanted to do all of this all he would need to do is tell the hero association the headquarters have been built to perfection its defensive capabilities are off the charts it has state-of-the-art weaponry defending it, automatic, autonomous. You don't need to do anything. It will target and lock down on monsters and blow them away before they can even step in the 10-mile in the radius of the Monster Association. He could have said all of that stuff, and it simply could have been a lie. That's, that's all he needed to do, right, uh, to, to, make, to make the Hero Association a, a sitting duck for any monster that wanted to go invade it. And if he had done that, if he made the walls paper thin and stuff like that, it would have been it would have been just as easy for him to enact his his future plan according to Drive Knight, um, as as this plan would be. Right? This this plan seems a lot more elaborate. Uh, if he was if he's gonna essentially what I'm saying is if he wanted to kill everyone the way he it seems that Drive Knight's um, saying he wants to, he there's there's an easier way to do it. Uh, because it, it, he doesn't need to hide from blame, right? If he just got a whole bunch of monsters coming in, infiltrated the base, um, and he he made the Hero Association so frail that it was easy to occupy and easy to essentially uh, break into, then it, it would have achieved the same thing. So I'm thinking this all sounds too elaborate for a scheme where there are easier uh, there are easier ways to do the same thing. So Drive Knight's here like, yeah, his plan is to keep uh, growing his military personnel, his military force, and then he wants to take over the world. This all seems very small-minded, something that Bofoy wouldn't really do. 
Anyway, second God of Thea, like, he's like, mm, you know what? You still haven't actually presented any proof. And you see Drive Knight here just, like, you know, thinking to himself, like, yeah, actually, I haven't presented any proof. So then this is where the conversation takes an even weirder turn and an even more suspicious turn. Drive Knight's like, if the headquarters were to come under attack next, do you think the number one hero, Blast, would make a move? And you see the silhouette of Blast here. He's got kind of like this wrapping around his body. A lot like Garo's kind of wrapping around his body. This black and wrapping around his body looks awesome. He's got a cape. He's a very kind of Endeavor looking silhouette from the back. A uh, very muscular looking, looking guy. And second guy here is just like, Blast, nah, he's not coming. He's more in retirement is, is what I hear. And then you see this uh, blacked out drive night with his eye narrowed. And he's like, oh, is that so retired, huh? Um, so then second guard hearing all this information he's like, he calls the hero association he's like okay we're going to we're going to improve secu security I'm going to tell them to tighten up security and then you see this energy beam just fly up out of nowhere uh, some sort of death beam or something like that and his arm gets blown off second guard's arm gets blown off and I felt bad for second guard here uh, he's there writhing in pain his, his, he's just been given the Luke Skywalker treatment or the Anakin Skywalker treatment or anybody whose name is Skywalker in Star Wars He's been given that treatment. Can't wait for Ray to lose one of her limbs. Uh, I don't think it's going to happen, though. Anyway, we see G5 in pieces, essentially. He's just about holding together, and he's the individual that shot out that laser beam and took off uh, Second Guard's arm. Uh, Drive Knight here talks about how he actually can't defend Second Guard because he's been, um, he, he can hardly move due to a, a depleted energy store he's lost all of his battle energy because of the dozens of hours of continuous operation and the hard battle he just fought now i think in the podcast we were kind of i said this was bullshit like surely you can't be you can't be running low on energy you know that i'm not sure if that's how you actually operate i think he's just bullshitting especially because i think that drive night is suspicious enough to actually be uh either part of the sh some sort of shared network with g5 so they might be like you know two bodies one mind kind of thing um so i think they're actually in cahoots with one another um, but also, um, I, I can see it from the other side in the sense of, you know, Drive Knight has been in operation for the last two days. He's been interrogating monsters, fighting monsters, doing all that good shit. And now he's just fought against Nyan. Like, surely, even even if he wasn't running on, like, a, a limited amount of energy, even if he was human, he'd be tired by now, right? So I'm not sure how that goes, but we know that um, Drive Knight is... He's machine, right? There should he's he must be working off of some sort of energy source. So I'm not sure. I'm not completely sure if he's bullshitting. I get the feeling he's bullshitting, uh, but I'm not too sure. Anyway, second guard is here, kind of pleading to the people around him, the, the dead heroes. He's like, "Can can anybody help us?" And Drive Knight's like, "Nah, these guys are pretty much toast." Uh, and he asks again. He's pushing here again. He's like, "Are you sure you can't get in in touch with Blast?" And I'm like, "What is it with Drive Knight and wanting Blast to come unless?" unless he he wants to see blast unless he wants to analyze blast and he wants to take that because you have to remember tactical transformation gold look, look looked a lot like boros and i get the feeling that drive knight was able to watch that assimilate all of that while well, he was watch he's watching it analyzing all of that fight and he was able to assimilate that into himself which is why he looked so familiar uh, and maybe that's what he that's what he wants to do with blast and matt actually came up with a, a really solid theory uh, in that podcast so go watch that section if you can i'm not sure when it is but he comes up with a theory of like you know if g4 was um a g4 was essentially some sort he looked like some sort of monarchy right and he he was there to battle king and then you had g5 some sort of samurai who battled uh, atomic samurai so maybe drive knight if he's a part of the uh, association the mysterious association maybe he's been designed to battle against blast and whether you, whether you want to believe in that or not i think it's a good theory um, i'm not sure whether i actually fully agree with it but i think it's a it's a good theory um to put out there but i just feel like i feel like there's something more to it in the sense of drive knight he seems to want to really meet blast i'm not sure if it's to fight him or to try and kill him or it's whether to start try and assimilate information from him so they can create more of these weird cyborg machinery things anyway uh second guy he he says again i can't contact blast and then he considers whether he should just, you know, use his um, executive beam to kill um, G5. Anyway, the smaller machine within G5, so it's like the <clears throat> this nano machine. Not really nano, it's just a small kind of uh, freezer, small form kind of thing. 
um, within G5. It breaks out of its its shell, which is G5, and it straight rushes towards second guard. And it looks it looks quite big to be fair. Like I'm not sure how it fit inside G5. It looks a lot thicker than G5 ever was. Anyway, it rushes straight towards uh, second guard, getting ready to take his head off. And then we suddenly see someone from the distance flying in like a meteor who absolutely demolishes this this robot, uh, this G5 core, essentially. And it's Genos, who's finally made his entrance. He looks awesome. He was like he's coated in flames due to the speed he was flying in at. He looks like he's got uh, some upgraded design. He looks a lot like he's got Elder Centipede pieces on him, but I don't think he does. It just looks like it's inspired by Elder Centipede's carapace. Uh, you know, that black and metal looks once again very familiar to the monster uh, to the hero association itself. Um, but Genos comes in, makes an awesome entrance, kills the G5 core, and he's, he just looks back and he's like, still seems like I'm upgrading faster than these guys are. He then looks at Second God and asks what the situation is. Second God is there, thankful as shit that, you know, G Genos has arrived. But you see Drive Knight, and the only reaction he has is some sort of like cold anger. His eye narrows again. He's looking at Genos and he's like, ah, oh, Genos. And I'm just like, this guy, he, like, this whole chapter is just pointing to the fact that G5, uh, that sorry, G, um, Drive Knight could very, very well. And it sounds and it looks like he's the traitor. He's got to be the mole, right? But I feel like it's making it so obvious. It's making it so clear cut that it, there has to be a different a, a different kind of ending to this, right? He can't be, he, he's too, ob, it's too obviously him for him to be the traitor, right? But I still feel like he is. I don't. I don't see like. I don't think Beaufoy has a good enough reason. We don't know enough about Beaufoy to be pointing fingers at him. But Drive Night, this whole chapter where he's like, "Where's Blast? Give me Blast, 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 Blast," and then he's also like, "Oh, so the monsters, so so the Hero Association." Sorry, he's just like, "Hmm, so it's uh, you told me it's uh, it's unguarded. There's nobody right there right now. I can just walk in with my friends, house party," and I'm just like, "That's that's suspicious right there, dude." So. Let me know what you guys thought of this chapter. Let me know what you guys thought of this review. Like, comment, subscribe, all of that good stuff. And I'll see you guys in a bit.